everyone. Hope you're all doing well today and Happy New Year. In today's video, we're going to be embroidering this jacket on this embroidery machine. Don't panic, I'm not going to record the whole video over that machine sound. I just thought it was interesting to show what my work environment is like. For today's project, I will be using the 50 needle HCU embroidery machine. And I thought I'd just tell you a little bit why I prefer to use this machine over my 12 needle HCS2 embroidery machine for embroidering larger items like jackets. Before I acquired the HCU, I did all of my embroidery and that includes jackets on the HCS2. So although it's smaller, the HCS2 is perfectly capable of embroidering on jackets. It just became more convenient to use the HCU for embroidering on denim jackets jackets because of one major reason which I'm gesturing to now. I feel it's fairly uncommon for embroidery machines to have this feature anyway but on the HCS2 there is no gap between the pantograph arm and the bobbin arm. So when I was hooping up my jackets I'd have to kind of fold and pin the jacket in a particular way so that the excess material doesn't interfere with the movement of the embroidery machine. This becomes more of an issue if the jacket is large and there is more material. Whereas, as you can see here, there is the bobbin arm on the 15 needle HCU machine. And I'm moving the camera now to sort of better explain what I want to tell you about. There are the two arms that you attach the hoop to. And you can see there is a gap between the pantograph and the bobbin arm. And so when you're hooping up a jacket, uh, the excess material of that jacket just slides underneath there and hangs freely. It allows for the uh, machine to move freely and you don't have to worry about um, sort of securing the excess material in a way that it isn't gonna get jammed up in your embroidery machine. In today's video, I will be embroidering on a lady's medium jacket, but to illustrate my point, I hooped up a men's XL jacket. And you can see that excess material is just hanging freely outside of the hoop, it's not getting caught up in anything. And I didn't have to kind of secure it with bulldog clips like I had to do on the HCS2. So as someone who embroiders on denim jackets all the time, this feature was a huge deal for me. I wanted to draw attention to it because it's such a niche and specific thing that I feel like a lot of brochures wouldn't really show you that when they're trying to sell you the embroidery machine. And it also might not be a feature that you would have thought to have looked out for, even if you also embroider on denim jackets. So I just wanted to point it out. Okay, now let's start the video for real and embroider on a denim jacket using the HCU. For this project, I'm going to be using two layers of a medium weight tearaway stabilizer. And I want to cut my stabilizer so that it is large enough to cover all the edges of the embroidery hoop. The hoop I'm using today is a large 14 by 16 inch magnetic hoop. I was excited to demonstrate its snappy magnetic properties and then quickly realized my mistake as I then struggled to prise the hoop apart when there's no material in the middle of it. And when I place my stabilizer on top of that hoop, I want to make sure that each sheet is large enough to cover all four corners of that hoop. And if it's not, then I just sort of spread the stabilizer out a little bit or configure it in a way that it will cover all the edges of the embroidery hoop. Now I'm going to show you how I hoop up denim jackets but I've got to tell you this isn't a very graceful or technical process. I don't really have much of a method and watching this back when I'm editing the video is probably going to be quite embarrassing but uh, this is just how I do it because I don't know any other way. If I wasn't feeling confident about where the center of my jacket was um, then I would use Taylor's chalk to mark out the center and then also a measuring tape just to measure and find the middle which just for the video uh, is just half of 36 
This shouldn't take this long. Half of 36 is 80. Okay, so that is the middle. And then the nice thing about Taylor's chalk is it just dusts off after. When I, I got a kind of, cause this is a ladies medium jacket. And I think really that this magnetic hoop is a bit too big. But on the other hand, it does demonstrate well how strong the magnets of the magnetic hoop are and how much easier it is than kind of like with a you know a traditional hoop, like pressing and pressing and pressing until it all fits. But that being said, this would be a lot easier if I did have a smaller magnetic hoop. And the other thing I like to do is I like to make sure the edge with the least amount of material is what is going into the embroidery machine so i wouldn't want to have like all this bulky collar going up under that arm i'd try and do it uh with as little fabric material as possible and i think that habit has come from using the hcs tool because it didn't have that gap but it's just a practice i carried forward so right back to struggling again using a magnetic hoop is normally a lot easier uh, when you have a larger jacket, but I think this does show quite well how easy it is to hoop up something that's awkward compared to a traditional hoop. And you can also see quite well because these seams are here, obviously that's not uh, straight with the hoop. And then you could, because like the hoop hasn't completely snapped into place yet, you can kind of drag the material around within the hoop, getting it nice and taut, because really you always want your jacket or whatever material to be like taut like a drum. And then as I'm doing that, you can see that the seam at the top is gradually straightening up. The hoop is getting a bit tight now as all the magnets are making contact. There, I think that's not too bad. Turning around give it a little pull from this direction. So this is actually hooped over a whole sleeve, which again goes to show how strong those magnets are. But it, all the magnets have made contact and this now, I'm gonna do a little bit more tweaking, but this is perfectly fine put into the embroidery machine and the hoop won't pop apart. And then you can see, see it's mostly straight, taut like a drum. I know there's a little bit more on this side than that side, but the design I'm embroidering is gonna be within these two lines anyway. And plus I've got my center mark so I can center up the design. Okay, so we are inserting the jacket onto the HCU. And you can see that little bit of extra material there. That will fit. Oh, well, actually, it doesn't reach because this jacket is so small. But if this was a larger jacket, it would fit neatly under the pantograph. And then I always have a feel. So I just move that up. Oops. I always have a feel underneath just to make sure there's no excess material trapped between uh, the bobbin arm and the hoop. I already had my design saved on the embroidery machine, uh, but because we've technically put the jacket in the hoop upside down, we need to flip the image upside down so that it will embroider the correct way on the jacket. I just, using the P center button, I moved my design to the center of the embroidery hoop. So using the trace function, I have moved um, the presser foot, which is here, whoops, it's that one though. <laughs> you don't need to do that because the HCU actually has a little laser, uh, which shows you where the presser foot will come down, where your needle will come down. So this is at the top of my design now, and I want to move it so that it's higher up near this top seam of the jacket. 
which is that's about where I want the top of my design to be and then I'm going to continue running my trace around the outside of my design to see where the edges of the design are and it's not quite even so I'm going to adjust the position of the design slightly and I can see that my laser point is there. If I wanted to, I can put a chalk mark there, but I'll just remember it's about a finger's width, a yeah, finger's width in from the seam. And then I'm gonna go do the reverse to see how that marries up on the other side. And that is also about a finger's width. So my design is now where I want it to be and I can just press start. I should mention that because I work from home, I run my embroidery machines on quite slow settings. But this machine is actually capable of doing, I think it's 1,500 stitches per minute. So just for this video, let's see how fast it goes. It's quick! Obviously, the stitch speed does depend on the stitch length, but this is doing a fill stitch right now, and it's on cruising along at 1,050 stitches per minute, which is very loud! You should probably have ear defenders! And then after unhooking the jacket, this is my favourite part. It's tearing off the back in because I feel like it really gets all of your aggression out. I just do it one layer at a time. You don't necessarily have to pull all of it off. I just tend to remove the parts that are kind of already loose. And then I also cut away any uh, longish tie offs, thread and after I've done this I will then press the material with an iron. I'll also give it to my mother to look over because she is quality control and I can guarantee she won't be happy with the way I've removed the stabiliser and she will then remove even more but that's her prerogative. I personally think it's okay to leave a little bit of a stabiliser on. And here is the completed product. Here is the completed jacket. Thank you all for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful in some way. If you'd like to see more of my content, then my Instagram is pink underscore bird underscore originals. If you could give this video a like and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that as it does help my channel grow. And again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.